hello. So I'm going to talk about the several experiments in summation and the work is mainly done by Paul and Brother with collaborations from uh, uh, Paranal, Julien Mili and Jonathan uh, Kolb and Carlos Correa and gravity collaboration. So why, why do we want to estimate R0 in the alpha scale? Uh, obvious need site evaluating characterization. If you want to optimize your radio system, you will need some sort of uh, estimates. And actually, during the operation of the radio system, uh, it's, it's important to uh, update these values. And if you want to estimate uh, the point spread function, you need uh, the turbulence parameters with or without the IO. If you're using a fringe tracker and you want to optimize it, it's also important. And therefore, there are many, many dedicated experiments uh, like the loon, the beam, the mass, and others. But uh, we want to use the shark Hartman. Why? Because they are everywhere, okay? Shark Hartman uh, wavefront sensors are everywhere. And so you can uh, make use of existing infrastructure. Uh, they have uh, uh, some spatial and temporal synchronism with the observations. If you're observing at the same time, uh, collecting the data from the telemetry, uh, they are at, at, at the same uh, time. And they have uh, almost identical uh, turbulent paths and uh, include the effects that are normally not uh, taken into account if you have your, your dedicated experiment elsewhere um, in, the, in the platform. And therefore, there was a lot of work. I just some, uh, put here some, uh, some references on, the, on this topic. And so what you normally do when you're trying to uh, estimate R0 on the outer scale with a shark Hartman wavefront sensor is that you have some way to, to go from the slopes to the Zernic. Uh, and this is normally done with a simulation of your system. And then when you have your, your measurement of the slopes, you, you compute the variances, and um, these are your uh, estimated variances. And then you denoise them because there is a contribution from noise to the variances, and this is the typical, you do a, an autocorrelation, a temporal uh, correlation of your, uh, of your data, and at, at time equals zero, you have the noise uh, contribution, and of course, noise is not correlated in time. You remove this, and then you have, uh, uh, a good range of radial orders to fit, and then you fit. And what you fit is normally the von Karman model, and is actually your definition of R0 and the outer scale they are from this model. And uh, this is what you get. Okay, so here we, you, you have several azimutal components, that's why you have a staircase, but this is typically what you get. So uh, what we do is a little bit different. Uh, we we, I'm going to start with, uh, with a, a lot of simulation work, basically with OMAO and some Python tools, DASP and AO tools, and we assume a von Karman uh, turbulence, then we assume a, a, a geometric wavefront sensor, we just took uh, uh, NACO-like, and because we are in, on uh, an ideal world, we have information on the phase screen, which we, in our simulation, we assume independent, we, we can estimate uh, the Zerni coefficients, which, which we call estimated, because they pass through the, the, the shark hartman wavefront sensor. But because we have the phase screens, we know the true uh, Zernikis. And we also know the undetected Zernikis, because, of course, your sensor has a, has a, a frequency cutoff. And uh, what the, the first take-home message here is that you have a problem that is cross-coupling. And uh, you, there is simply no way to uh, overcome it with a classical approach. And so, basically, uh, where it, 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 it appears, it appears because you have a, a gradient sensor and your gradient uh, matrix is not orthogonal. And therefore, there is a, a, a cross-coupling. And uh, uh, if you are estimating R0 and uh, the outer scale with Zernikis, it will be affected by this. Now, you can diagonalize the covariance matrix, and uh, this is okay. But you cannot uh, jointly estimate uh, R0 and the outer scale in the, in, with this basis, uh, in, in a, in a, at least with the model fitting approach. And 
well, this is just a, a pun uh, for you to think about. Uh, diagonalizing a covariance matrix al allows you to have statistical independence, but does not guarantee uh, geometric coupling that is uh, connected to the cross coupling. And therefore, cross coupling is unavoidable if you are doing a joint estimation with model fitting in the Zernike uh, space. Uh, so let's just see how how this appears. So you you could think that cross coupling will appear. Uh, um, uh, or, or will appear due to aliasing or other effects, but let's just uh, try to understand what's going on. So when you're estimating these turbulence parameters, you're normally in a, zoo, in a low uh, radial order range. You're not using the full range of the, of, the, of the sensor. And basically you have aliasing, but the aliasing is just the effects of the unseen modes falling back into the last uh, orders of your of your detector so they they appear actually very uh, very at very high order and therefore cross coupling it will have localized effects on radial orders uh, all across the spectrum and uh, it can add or or subtract and therefore this is the dominant effect in, uh, in R0 uh, outer scale estimation. And here I have two curves, and the, the idea of this is that you have here in red unfiltered phrase, phrase screen, so the full uh, turbulence, and uh, as, as seen by the Shack Hartman, and then uh, a filtered one where the Shack Hartman is, is seeing a phase screen that was filtered to the cutoff frequency, and you see that there is almost no difference. Why? Because we are in the low, uh, in the low uh, radial regime and there is no aliasing going on. So how do you, we overcome the cross-coupling? So the, the idea is that the measured variances are the true variances plus a noise contribution and plus a, a cross-coupling uh, contribution. And it turns out that this is analytic and can be computed. And uh, the cross coupling co contribution has some uh, terms that are just cross terms of seen modes by the, the Shack Hartman and unseen modes by the Shack Hartman. But, uh, and so you see, uh, you, you just say, oh, I have unseen modes, what I'm going to do? And uh, the, the, the answer is that the unseen modes are just a function of R0 on the outer scale. And so if you assume a, a, a value for the R0 on the outer scale, you can compute the cross coupling. And, uh, and, the, and, and this is the, the idea, we have an interactive method. And so the, in, in this interactive method, we just do the classical uh, uh, approach and we have a biased estimate. Then uh, in the, in the uh, remaining interactions, we just add the cross coupling term, which is a function of the previous uh, R0 and outer scale estimate. And we improve, uh, we improve the estimate of R0 and, uh, and the outer scale. And we also include, uh, in, in our case, we are not denoising the data with the Fusco method, but we are fitting for the noise also. And uh, you could also have uh, an alternative of joint estimation, but uh, it is actually not obvious how can you do that. And just for you to have an idea uh, of, of the results, so here, this is an outer scale uh, simulation. And uh, this is the radial order here is the last radial order in your fit. So you, you have this open, uh, let's say, degree of freedom. You, you, you can fit for the outer scale and the R0, but there is a free, uh, some freedom, but because you can s select the good domain in radial orders where to fit. So here we are just changing the last radial order and we start just after focus. And, and you see in red, this is the estimate of the classical approach. So you have uh, uh, actually a value that depends on the last radial order used. And in green, uh, blue, and black, you have the estimates after one interaction, two interactions, three interactions. And in dashed, which is very difficult to see for you guys, is the phase screen uh, uh, outer scale. And so you see that our improvement is drastic and we readily converge without any bias from the last radial order to the correct value. And so this is for the, an outer scale of uh, 32 meter, and if this, there is just too much information, but, uh, but here we have just 
estimates of R0, which was assumed at 10 centimeters. So this is this, the, the expected value for different outer scales uh, going from 4 meter, 8 meters, uh, 16 meter, uh, 32 meter. And this is the noise uh, estimate also uh, that is converging to what you expect uh, everywhere. Very quickly, after three interactions, we are there. And uh, it is very important that this bias will not be saved by noise. And if you actually there is a, contra in, uh, in a contraintuitive uh, effect, that if you are if you are increasing your signal to noise and you think you're going to have a better estimate, you actually have a bias because noise uh, is good in the sense that it it uh, it uh, it um, reduces the contributions of cross coupling. So if you are dominated by noise, cross coupling is not important and you're less biased. So this is the why, as the signal to noise increases, you are more uh, you are more and more biased. So what about real data? So the next step was to uh, to um, to look at real data, and we are trying to uh, to use uh, uh, data at Paranal. So Paranal is full of Shackhart and wavefront sensors at different positions, just for you to have an idea. So they are the four uh, Xiao wavefront sensors. In the UTs, we have the four Naomi wavefront sensors. We have Saxo, and we have the AOF. And basically, uh, that is that is a lot, and they are going to increase in time. And they are uh, very different one from the other. So Saxo is a 40 by 40. It's a visible, and uh, let's say the data is in KL base. Then the Xiaos, it's now a smaller one, but they operate in the K band. And uh, the data is also in the KL base, but it's in the CUDA photo, so there is rotation. The Naomi's, now they are in the visible. They are very small, just a 4 by 4, but the control is on Zernikis, and they are in the CUDA focus, so there is rotation. And you have the AOF, which is a 40 by 40. They, they are in the visible, and you have uh, also KL modes. And so the, the, our, our idea is that what can we do with this data? So uh, the first uh, approach, so what is the approach that we have? So the, the approach that we have is that uh, let's try to collect open loop. So open loop data is very simple, but you don't want to do it because it uses uh, science time. And uh, the method is simply you just contrast, construct your slopes to Zernik metrics from a geometric model. So this is, this is the wavefront sensor space. This is the DEM space. And in, in the open, uh, open loop, you are just in this uh, area. And uh, you, you, can, you can communicate with the slopes and the, and the wavefronts. And then you have the Zernics. You apply the fitting to the variances, and that's done. Okay? So it's uh, relatively straightforward except that some, uh, some systems like uh, uh, Saxo will not operate in open loop because the field, is, the field of view of the, wave of the lenses is too small. If we have in closed loop, uh, closed loop this is uh, actually very interesting because it will run parallel to science. You just record the data, and this is very useful. And the cons is that you, have, uh, you, are, now, you are now in trouble because you are combining slopes and voltages. And uh, you want to have let's say, an absolute. So uh, an adaptive optic system is just a, a control system. It's just updating with time and going to a, a given. Uh, so in a way, it's intrinsically di differential with variable gains and stuff like that. And we are doing something different with, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the system. We're trying to have some like a, an absolute measurement of R0 and uh, outer scale. So the way we communicate with this is not so, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, any calibration will, will, will be problematic. So what we have to do is to define where you're going to work, wavefront sensor or DM space, then we convert to each one of them, and then uh, we have the Zernik is, and, it's, and, and it's done. Okay. So uh, I just present here some uh, initial results because we're still working on them. So this is open loop with Naomi. And, uh, and you see that we go uh, to very, a very low number of no modes. And uh, that is basically, we don't see for this data set that we, we took uh, any, any, any different, uh, difference at all. And uh, this is probably also related to uh, noise and all, all, all other effects. But we have here the, the fits header uh, values. And you see that the fits header values are more or less uh, similar. Uh, some uh, some of them are, are are different because probably the date, uh, the time is like the timestamp of the file, 
change and, 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 and the read, the, the thing that was read in, in, in the feed setter is not exactly the same. But we see that we have slightly less uh, the values from the, 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 the thing monitor weight compared to what we get. But this is Naomi, we are very low in the ground, we have all the turbulence from the telescopes and we might expect that. When we go to the Seals, we also have uh, our, our estimates uh, here. Uh, so we just have one data set, so uh, we have here a very low value, but again, we, we, we have comparable values with the scene monitor, a little bit uh, higher, but comparable. And uh, uh, Saxo, so Saxo, we have a problem with Saxo because the field of view is too small for uh, open loop data, so we use archival. And uh, we, you, you, you can see here two effects. And uh, the, the, the value here, we don't understand why. We are still trying to understand. But uh, we, we see at least that when we, we, we correct, we have changes of, of seeing of 10 to 20%. And when we study uh, uh, with the, 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 the curves here are, are after uh, uh, without an interaction, so the classic metal, and when we start to converge, uh, doing our interactions, and you see that we are seeing uh, uh, changes with the reconstructor size in terms of radial order, so we are taking into account uh, all these modes. We have still some, uh, so this is work in progress, we are still trying to understand what we have. So uh, just to wrap up, the short term we have to, uh, to work on closed loop data issues, understand what's going on. Then our, our goal is re really to look at the archive data and, and run the pipeline and really have a, a, the, the estimates to compare with atmospheric mo uh, monitor. And uh, with regards to the turbulence uh, parameters, now because we have a sample of, of Shaq Hartmans, we can uh, try to see how, what we are getting with the Shaq Hartman. How does R0 on the outer scale change from telescope to cell scope because we have four simultaneous measurements and you can try to think is there really an outer scale at parallel uh, or is, is it changing from uh, one telescope to another and uh, try to connect them with the mountain uh, position all that and of course look at no, no stationary effects and see if uh, this can be used in Sparta for, uh, for the, the for the feed setter, a small uh, AOF uh, implementation of a previous method uh, is, is already there. And so I invite you to, to see the news in the Adaptive Optics Week in Porto in 2020. And a very important uh, message also is that we need telemetry data curation. It's absolutely fundamental. And so we need really to document, archive and distribute and have some standards for the future. Uh, uh, for telemetry data. This is mandatory and uh, at least uh, we, if uh, this data is there and is really at ISO and outside ISO and it's really a, a wealth of information. So I end with, uh, with the announcement of the, the portal workshops. This is uh, the continuation of the Durham uh, week of workshops that we had last year, so uh, this year. So next year is going to be in Porto, save the date, 30th of March. And, uh, 3rd of April, we, we're going to follow also the, the wavefront sensing approach, so no registration fee, you have your coffee breaks, your lunch, and uh, that's it, so welcome. <laughs>